Well, bless the Lord, everybody. Everybody bless the Lord. Good to be here with you one more time to share the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel that Jesus preached. We're going to get deep in the word tonight because we want to get more and more. There's so much more to excavate out of the word that we just get getting warmed up. Amen. Praise God. There's so much more in the word. And the more we look, the more the Holy Spirit unveils to us the mysteries of the kingdom amen and it's for those who believe those who have god needs to know about the kingdom of god amen praise god come on let's lift those hands and just let's acknowledge your ability father father we just thank you for this occasion once more to be here and to oh god to impart in your word thank you for your holy spirit that is present with us to bring us in greater levels of truth understanding and application that will yield greater fellowship and communion between you and your son and your holy spirit working in our lives and so god i thank you for the grace you have given us in christ we embrace that anointing now to destroy every yoke lift every burden clear every distortion distraction delusion and delusion let our minds be set fixed and firm in your word O oh god and let your word unveil the glory of your kingdom to us now as we embrace your truth let it demolish every work of darkness of ignorance of waywardness of things O oh god that are unfruitful and unproductive let your kingdom come and your will be done now as we submit our lives to you and thank you for the grace to step into greater understanding we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, give me the praise. Hallelujah. Well, thank you all for coming and for those who are joining us online. We thank God for you for taking the time to do so. Hope you're ready with your notebook and your pen and your book to get into the word. We are demolishing some thoughts and imaginations that the devil set up to put people into illusion about what the kingdom of God is really about and we really want persons to know Jesus came to preach the gospel of the kingdom everywhere he went he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and that is pointed out in scripture in Matthew 4 verse 23 and in Matthew 9 verse 35 we know that everywhere he went that was what he was preaching praise God he said in the name of the synagogue he went in every city or place he went that was what he was preaching we know that there are other messages that we can take from the bible about david and goliath and gideon and and all the different sto stories of uh, testimonies of persons of faith that walk in faith before the lord and and the testimony did stand as people of god men and women of faith that trusted in god and did great exploits in it name of the lord but we want to take special note to look and what was the message jesus was preaching because it says up until the time of john the law and the prophets was preached you know and it says until the time of john but it says but until that time it says jesus started to preach the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom amen hallelujah he says that uh, what is that Oh yes in verse 12 from the days of john the baptist until now he says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force for it says for all the prophets and the law prophesied until john it prophesied until john so we know that john was the closing of an era hallelujah but, but the breaking point of a new one hallelujah was announced and declared as christ being that pioneer to bring about a new wave of level of understanding about the kingdom of god and about we as ears of god how do we operate in that kingdom and our share and our position in the kingdom of god now oftentimes we have made it clear but we still do it from time to time to bring that clarity to persons that the kingdom of heaven is not heaven uh, just the same way we said jesus of nazareth is not nazareth hallelujah it's really it's talking about jesus that was known from nazareth and because he's known from that place then they said jesus of nazareth same way the kingdom of god is known from heaven but it is not heaven 
the point of the message is not so much about heaven but the point of the message is about god's governance and how does god govern because he says we are in fact ears of god and join ears with christ and he says then if you are ears of god and join ears with christ we need to know how to operate and how to possess and operate the thing that god has laid down for us in other words he has put in in store for us as ears of god what are we ears to is it just joy and peace and feeling nice and worshiping god and singing hallelujah praise the lord no he says in fact we have an inheritance we have a what inheritance and jesus did say to his disciples that it is the father's good pleasure to what give to you the kingdom it is your inheritance as a ear of god as children of god we are ears of his possession and he all that is under his reign is his kingdom the spear of which a king rules over is called his kingdom and jesus christ is the king of kings and the lord of laws amen praise god and we know that if he's king of kings there are kings <laughs> for him to be kings of in that kingdom praise god not just here in this world that have kingdom of men but more so we talk about the kingdom of god hallelujah and we say that the kingdom of god is different from the kingdom of men hallelujah there's a picture that was given of that in daniel chapter 2 that nebuchadnezzar had a vision from god about the image and it was really de depicting the kingdom of men different times when a kingdom was 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 ruled by different men in different era and different times and so he, he saw this image that had a head of gold uh, and arms and chest of silver belly and thigh of bronze leg of of iron and feet of clay and iron and clay and he said that really was the kingdom of men because he was told that he nebuchadnezzar who was ruler at the time of the, the the babylonian empire he at that time he was being told that the lord was saying to him that you is the head of gold that's what daniel was explaining to him you are that head of gold he said but there are other kingdoms that will come after you and daniel made it clear to him that god gave to him a kingdom Huh? God gave to him a what? Kingdom. He, he said that in verse 37 of Daniel 2. Jesus, the Lord said to him, You, O king, are a king of kings. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom. Power, strength, and glory. He gave him kingdom. He gave him power. Gave him strength. And he gave him glory. And he says, We're ever the children of men dwell our beasts of the field our birds of the ear he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all you are this head of gold come on and that is depicting if you re realize the kind of description of the spear of what he rules over you see that kind of description is being given to adam when he was made in genesis 1 verse 26 where the lord says give him dominion to rule over fish of the sea the fowls of the air everything that creep and crawl upon the earth and over what all the earth and over what all the earth it was his kingdom it was a kingdom that was given to adam and not merely a place that he said is just in a garden no a kingdom was given to him and in fact it said that spear covered the whole earth not just the garden where he was but the whole earth come on but what god intended was that the, the lush provision that was there for him in that garden the beauty of god's presence displayed there and god's glory displayed there among which spread across the whole earth if he continued steadfastly with the lord but of course we know that his sin break that fellowship and and interfered with the process of what god was doing in adam in that garden but god didn't end it there god already told the the the, the, the woman and the man after their sin he spoke to that serpent in genesis 3 verse 15 and spoke that there would be salvation for the man a seed of the woman would come and crush the head 
of the serpent huh seed of the woman will come and crush the head of the serpent and he will bruise his heel come on lord said i will put enmity between you and the woman between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel he shall crush your leadership talking about your head he shall break your reign from over men but he will pay a price for it to what he suffer in his flesh it talks bruise his heel because if you use your bare foot to step in the head of a serpent you can kill a serpent you can crush him with the weight in his head but of course it will do some damage to your foot it will do some damage to your flesh using a bare foot to do that and that was what was being depicted there through that statement and he says he was really prophesying about christ coming even at that time the kingdom was being spoken of to adam that it be restored through this seed of the woman this what seed of the woman praise god he says to the woman i will greatly multiply your sorrow and conception and in pain bring forth children your desire shall be your husband those are the things that they had to suffer because of the disobedience but the word of god did say that they would be redeemed already through the one that would come huh and that's why adam went further to name her eve as his mother of the living he said that life would come from her he was not talking about life just to have many children but he's talking about the promise god made about that seed that would come it was all about that seed from genesis to revelation it's all about that seed the seed that would come and restore not just man that was fallen but restore the kingdom that wasn't given to man and was lost that it will now be restored to god come on now. so he says then this is what it's all about he came to seek and to save that which was lost but it was only it wasn't only man that was lost but a kingdom that was lost and it fell into the hands of the one who adam chose to obey adam and eve in their disobedience to god they obeyed what the serpent said that old serpent which the bible declares is the devil hallelujah and he of course was cast down huh jesus coming to the forefront now started to declare this gospel this what this gospel is good news about the kingdom of god man's kingdom was failing because we saw that in what is written in daniel chapter 2 here yeah, we saw that man's kingdom is failing that the, the quality and the, and and the structure of it was being depreciated it was getting at a lower and lower grade because it's moving from gold to silver to bronze to iron then iron and clay and if you notice by the way it's falling in the texture of the quality of what is there it means that it's also losing value hallelujah it's losing what value and at the point where it would cease to exist uh, of it being there as god set up a kingdom to be operated there that man would have hand and say in here it is now god replaced it with a permanent structure and this one came with the stone he says that was uncut that came from heaven hit that image in its feet and he says of course everything of that image was destroyed in other words the kingdom of man was replaced with the kingdom of god the kingdom of man is replaced with what the kingdom of god and that's what daniel told him in verse 44 he says in those days of these kings the god of heaven will set up a kingdom not man set up one now but the god of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed this is permanent those that they had were temporary but this one is permanent huh come on now and so he says the god of this world god of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand how long forever come on now give me more now and it says in as much as you saw the stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands he says that it broke in pieces the iron bronze clay silver gold 
that is talking about the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw. He says it broke in gold all the, the representation of those kingdoms that would come. Because the gold part of it spoke about the Babylonian Empire. And the, 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 the silver part of it spoke about the Medes and the Persian that came afterwards that took over after the Babylon Empire fell. Then afterwards it was replaced by the what? Bronze. That was Greece. Greece Empire reigned for that time. And then it was ruled then by the iron, which was the Roman Empire that took its place. That was the feat. And then it was it fall down into different into a basic lower grade of kingdom which was really talking about the, the superpowers that they call world powers that are ruling now into the different ten nations ruling nations that are ruling now but he says hey a kingdom came and destroyed every structure of that and that he says that is a kingdom that god set up this is not done by man now but this is one now said by god god set up this kingdom and he says that in this point that all the other kingdoms were destroyed huh he says that the great god has made known to the king what will come to pass after this and he said the dream is certain and its interpretation is sure come on and he's telling him that the kingdom of god is an everlasting kingdom but the kingdom of man being that it had he run it into sin it became something very temporary and had an expiry date sin brought death and death of course meant that the, those who were appointed to rule would not be there to rule but god desired to have a kingdom manifest in the earth and his kingdom manifest in the earth still place one there to run it huh which is the christ that came as king of kings and the kings now being those who are joint ears with him the kings now being those who are joint, that's why the word of god says we are kings and priests unto god we are what kings and priests unto god he has called us to be a part of that kingdom huh and he wants us to be truly prepared praise god to be truly prepared and qualified to inherit that kingdom huh come on now you got it so he, he he declared that he would have dominion over all huh that's revelation one revelation one verse five to seven says and from jesus christ the faithful witness the firstborn from the dead firstborn from this is the first one who rose from the dead never to die again so if he's the first one others are coming and he says the ruler over kings of the earth and he says to him who love us and wash us from our sins in his own blood he said and has made us what kings and priests to his god and father to him be glory and dominion how long forever and ever come on he said we have been declared through him kings and priests being joined ears with him we share in the kingdom and that's why he was saying to his disciples fear not little flock it is your father's good pleasure to what give to you the kingdom and he says then you need to be prepared in your understanding about this he says that's why trainers are given to you just like a young child that is growing up to inherit their, their, their father's inheritance to inherit their father's property and business they have to be under trainers to inherit it huh uh, that was described in 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 uh, galatians chapter 4 in galatians chapter 4 uh verse 1 to verse 6 he says now i say that the here as long as he's a child as long as he's what a child underdeveloped unprepared unequipped uh not fully mature does not differ at all from a slave though he is master of all he's master of all but as long as he's a child he cannot really take over the property yet till he has grown up into maturity huh he says but is under guardians and steward when until the time appointed by the father so the father appoint a time when that period of training will come to an end 
will be concluded for them to come into the fullness of their true position hello somebody said even so when we were children this is what paul is saying to the galatians there was a time we were children there was a time we were ignorant unprepared ill-equipped come on now there was a time we were walking in darkness there was a time we didn't know hallelujah where we were going not have any clue about what our life was truly about he says in that time we were ignorant we were under the bondage of the elements of the world but he says but when the fullness of the time had come god did what sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law to do what to redeem us from under the law huh to redeem those who are under the law that we might receive adoption as sons so he said we are moved from the point of being slaves to being sons you were living like slaves but he says really and truly god who called us already foreknew us and knew we were more than what we were acting like in our place of ignorance and ill trained but he knew that when he brought us in through christ we would then receive the power to walk and live as true sons come on now this comes through the son jesus christ has polished in with them that we might receive adoption as sons because you are sons what did paul say and because you are sons god has set forth the spirit of his son into your heart that you would have close relationship with him not just to call him father but abba father an intimate we have calling the father to say there's a close relationship between you and the father through what the son did huh praise god and give me some more and of course he tell him that spirit is a testimony huh so he says therefore they are no longer slaves but a son and if a son then what an heir of god through christ there it is you have an inheritance the ear of any man has in an as ownership to the property that that man has then how much more the ear of god because god owns a lot more than what man could own and he's saying he's not taking you on just as a man as a man that you will say then he's a slave you are just subject to him as a creature but he says no he's putting you in the family hallelujah he's putting you what in the family. that's why i say you've been adopted as sons you have come into this family through the son huh but then he says indeed when you did not know god he said there was a time you was like a child operating amongst the slaves operating just like the rest of the slaves because you didn't know who you were nor who you truly belonged to you didn't know your true identity that said that was a time of what he says your time of ignorance he says but then indeed when you did not know god you served those which were by nature are not gods in other words you're involved in idolatry and but now after you have known god or rather are known by god how is it that you turn again you see he's rebuking them for that because he's saying you who know this thing now should not go back to where you come from or to what the lord deliver you from you must know the position that the lord put you in now and appreciate and understand your true position because it was because adam and eve didn't understand their true position why they lost their position and also lost their possession because what would you be tempted to think if you disobey god you become more like god come on if they obey god they become more like god but if they disobey him they don't become like god they become ungodly <laughs> the very thing that the devil is tempting them that if you eat this you will be as gods that very thing would make them not gods because if they obey god they will be as gods that was the reverse of it that they did not understand so their lack of understanding in it gave room for the devil to play on their mind and to bring them into bondage through fear fear of what they thought they would lose if they didn't do what the devil said 
Come on. And the word of God says, that fear brings bondage. That's why Paul spoke that and said, you are, you are not being given a spirit again to fear. Remember that? You are not giving the spirit again up to fear, of bondage. But he says, you have been given a spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Come on. That's in Romans 8. Yeah, verse 15 to 17. Actually, reflecting the same thing that we are saying today. He says for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear if he says again to fear that means you had that spirit of bondage before but he says this receiving of the spirit now through christ did not give you that repeat of experience it's a new life that is given to you and it's a different spirit that has been given to you through christ and he says in fact you receive that spirit of adoption whereby you cry out abba father there it is again and what does the spirit does that spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are what we are children of god not just merely creatures of god but children of god bearing his very spirit and nature hallelujah and that is powerful come on and he said then if children then ears ears of god and join ears with christ and he said if indeed we suffer with him that we may also be what glorified together now many say no we just many songs are here singing today by those who say the worship in the lord say no glory for us lord the glory is not for us the glory is all for you and that's not true and the lord wants us to be as his children and as his children as god bears glory so will his children bear glory we're not going to be some unglorified creature standing before god alone that have the glory no god is glorifying us as much as we stand in his glory we are being glorified as his children so he said not only does he he, he call us but he predestined us and that who we call he predestined who he predestined he also called who he called he justified who he justified he what sanctified and who he sanctified what did he do he also glorified that's also in romans 8 verse 28 to 30 and you can see that he says he, he, he's not just going to just cleanse us from sin he said he also glorified us in verse 30 he also glorified so he says we know that all things work together for good for those who what love god to those who are called according to his purpose for whom he foreknew he knew us before we we're ever conceived in our mother's room he said whom he foreknew he also predestined he preset the end before the beginning and know what would become before we we're ever born and he said he also predestined us to be conformed to come into the fullness and stature of jesus christ he says into the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren our brothers and sisters he said that jesus being god will be our brother our elder brother and we will share the same father that he has will be our father and it won't be that we just call him father but legitimately our father and he says the holy spirit is bearing witness of that with our spirit he says moreover whom he predestined what did he do these he also called whom he called these he also what justified that's being made righteous and he says those who also justified these he also glorified you can say that we got to know the glory is not for us it's all for god what are they talking about you know take me to the king oh well, we keep making the mistake lord the glory is not for us it's all for you no the lord wants us to have the glory in fact jesus was praying that we have the glory jesus prayed that when he was praying in john chapter 17 to his father he prayed that as the father has glorified him that he also gave that glory to those who were disciples of him come on he said that in john 17 verse 22 and the glory which you gave me jesus says i have given them so should we say no lord don't give us this for you no it's not for us no he said it is for you if you are children of god you must bear the glory of god 
and he says the glory which you gave me i have given them he wasn't shy about that and speaking it in a little corner for them not to hear they get in it lest the head get big no he's telling them because he said you must share in the glory it is your purpose and your destiny to share in it and to bear that glory as children of god ah come on jesus will have that glory and so will you come on somebody john spoke about that in first john 3 verse 1 to 4 john spoke about that and said beloved uh, what manner behold what manner of love the father has what bestowed on us that we should be called what children of god he said therefore the world does not know us he said no world we are the world we are the children no not 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 like michael jackson gave that one but that the one didn't come from jesus he says uh uh the world doesn't know us how the world doesn't know us? he says because the world does not know him it is knowing him that brings us into the family and we can't know him without the son and we can't come in the fullness of the son without the holy spirit these three work as one and we got to understand the power of the word working with the spirit and the father's intention being revealed in all of this amen he says behold now we are when we are now we are children of god and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be but he says when we know that when he is revealed who is he that is christ is revealed we shall be like now we know christ is coming in all his glory he has glory and if he's coming with glory then will we be without none no we're just standing in his glory we don't got no glory only his glory we're standing in no he says we shall be as he is so shall we be we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and he says and everyone has this hope in him what do they do purifies himself how much just as he is can we be pure just as he is pure that's exactly what john is saying and john wasn't saying this as an ideal as something to press towards that you can never reach but he's saying it as a reality of the life he must have in him come on as he says whoever commits sin is also commit lawlessness and sin he says is lawlessness he said that's not the life for the believer huh for a child of god because he says christ gave us the example and the demonstration of how a child of god must live hallelujah and we must be followers of christ we then we must lay down the old way the old man as paul said put off the old man and put on the new man which is created in true righteousness and holiness huh come on now hallelujah says but you have not so learned christ you have not what so learned christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in who the truth is in jesus that you put off you what put off concerning your former conduct your former lifestyle your former ways the old man which grows corrupt according to what deceitful lust lying desires desires that were sown there by the devil and he says but be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on what the new man being a new creation is speaking as a new being as a new creation put on that new man which was created according to god in true what righteousness and holiness come on somebody he's not talking about still keeping the old man on and putting the, the new man on top of the old man no he said put off the old man and put on the new man therefore he's saying they should not be worn as one piece of garment they must be a putting off to fully be clothed in the one that you put on so it's not a mixture of saying we'll have a little bit of god and a little bit of the devil but that's just human no god is moving you from just being human from just being children of men to being children of god 
And he said, if you are children of God, then you are ears of God. Is there a reason why he used the word if? Because not all embrace the word to know that they are truly children of God. Legitimate children. Not children just by imagination or thought. But in reality, offspring of God. Come on somebody. And that's what he says. You, you are being made into new beings through Christ. Everything that God made, he made through the word of God. And Christ is that word of God that became flesh. Huh? And dwell amongst us. And he says that same word is now making us a new creation. Come on now. This is cause a new creature. A new species of being. More properly declared as new species of being because it's more than just saying we are we are creature because we made that distinction in our teaching even since we can yesterday and um, fast and prayer service we made a distinction for those who didn't watch it they can watch it to get more teaching on it that there's a difference between just being creatures and being children of God God made a, everything that God made is his creatures but when God moved you to be children of God, is more than just saying you're a creature. It's more than just saying he made you. That creature, that now being children of God is saying, you proceed from him. You are an offspring of his very being and nature and character. Come on somebody. Uh, well, that was the word of God. But what the Lord used to describe um, Abraham having a child when Abraham said that's Genesis 15 yeah Abraham was talking about uh, God just make one of the slaves in my house inherit what you give me because you have not given me any offspring you have given me no son so just let a slave born in my house let him inherit it because it's too late now <laughs> but what did the Lord say the Lord said to him in verse 4 this one shall not be your ear, but one who will come what? From your own body. In other words, it's coming from your kind. He didn't say one that you make. He said one that will come from your own kind. One that will come from your own body. Look at the description of the word. From your own body. He's not just adopted. He's not one you just take and call your child. He said, so when he says that spirit of adoption is given to us he's not take, he's taking us and just call us a child no he's saying that that spirit makes us legitimate children of God because that spirit is of his very spirit he pour in us so he's pouring to us his very life kind hallelujah which is eternal life mankind of life is mortal life God kind of life is eternal life they are different kind of life just as they are different kind of flesh come on now paul spoke about that in first corinthians 15 and said that there when he was talking about the resurrection and the other resurrection be he then went down to the point where he says they are different flesh and all flesh is not the same flesh come on now they are what different flesh and all flesh is not the same flesh that's first corinthians 15 verse 39 yeah all flesh is not the same flesh he says but there is one kind of flesh of men say so there's human flesh and human flesh different from animal flesh and animal flesh different from fish flesh and different and fish flesh different from the flesh of birds they all have flesh but he said it's not the same flesh come on then paul move on to about bodies he says there are celestial bodies and there are celestial bodies he said there are earthly bodies and there are heavenly bodies and so he says then consider that then he says but the glory of the celestial one is not the same glory of the terrestrial one so he says even glory have different kind of glory so angels have glory come on somebody and man have glory but god glory lord jesus come on 
is that different glory so it says there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon there's another glory of the stars you say all of them have glory but they are different kind of glory one star differs from another star in glory so he talk about glory he talk about body and he talk about flesh why is paul including all of this in talking about the resurrection because he's talking about the kind that we are coming back as is nothing close to what kind we are now is a different species of being we're coming back as glory to god and that's why he concluded in verse 50 to say flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god because he's telling them it's not about us coming back as human form to inherit it he says human form cannot inherit it and that's what human form would be described as flesh and blood and he says flesh and blood cannot inherit it why because flesh and blood is temporary and the kingdom is eternal so he said the kingdom is eternal you need to have an eternal body and an eternal life to keep it because who it is and it too he said it will not pass on to another it's going to remain with who we give it to now the kingdom of man they build their kingdom and then they die and have to pass to somebody else the kingdom they build up a kingdom again they die have to pass to somebody else because they are not they cannot they don't have everlasting life to hold on to what they have that they have is temporary because their life is also temporary but jesus god sent jesus to change that he says god will set up a kingdom in the earth that is a what everlasting kingdom will not pass to another come on so he says the kingdom now is coming in a different with a different atmosphere that the people who are appointed for it will be appointed for to it forever it's not appointed for a time so long as they live because they will live forever come on you got that and this is the powerful thing about it because uh, it will not be passed to other people that is our kingdom of the earth stay every kingdom passed to another one that's why uh nebuchadnezzar saw that image that went from gold to silver to bronze to iron to iron and clay and the, daniel was explaining to him say other kingdom coming after you you're not going to live forever so somebody is going to go over the kingdom other nations will rise to power and it won't just be you so that's why it moved from gold in the head of this figure the statue that he made the head was gold then the arms and the top of the body was in silver and then the abs and the thighs was in bronze and then the feet were in iron and then the, 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 the legs were in iron and then the feet was mixed with iron and clay so it says you notice it is degrading in its quality and structure as it goes down in other words the kingdoms that come after is coming with a weaker form of representation of the kingdom god want to have in the earth and god said at a point when it is going to a point where it says iron and clay doesn't mix what is it from the foot that's where it says god sets up a kingdom god sets up a kingdom because he says this kingdom will be passed to others but he says the one the lord set up in verse 44 he says it will never be destroyed and shall not be left to other people so who are appointed to it will never lose it not like adam that got it and then lost it to the devil and then all humanity suffered under the hands of the devil until christ came so christ came now as a means now to declare and to that structure to tell him that this is being set up now as a permanent kingdom in the earth a kingdom of god that he says he wants men to repent change their way of thinking and be able to qualify to be a part of and he says to do so you have to understand this one is permanent this is not temporary it doesn't call for temporary service temporary loyalty part-time service part-time love no it is said it is it must be permanent and he said you are being trained now for that huh come on now 
so that's why jesus came preaching the time is fulfilled mark 1 verse 15 yes the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god is at hand so it says repent and believe in the gospel what is the gospel as he said in verse 14 he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom of god the kingdom of men will fail but the kingdom of god will stand now the kingdom of god don't mean say only god alone will rule so man won't be ruling not man just subjects in there no he says though men who have chosen to be apart who have become joint ears with christ are now children of god they are part of the family who is running that network now they running that kingdom the kingdom is run by the family of god does god have family ah uh, he have a son does he only have one son no his son came that he would have many sons i said it is hebrews 2 verse 10 that that through that son many sons would come to glory that one son came for many sons to come come on he says for it is fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are what all things in bringing many sons to glory that's christ bringing many sons to glory and to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering what did he suffer he suffered being tempted he's not suffering by sinning as some people believe say our suffering is to sin until the lord save us from sin no <laughs> our suffering is to be tempted and the power of christ within us will keep us from yielding to that temptation to live the life amidst the temptation and still prove as true children of god watch that so it says for both he who what sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all what all of one for which reason is not ashamed to call them brothers he said if we are one then what is in me is also in you what he, uh, what grace is upon my life is also on your life what power is given to me is also upon your life and he said we are one we understand when we say he and the father is one so why we don't understand when we say he and us are one come on so that's why he says they are one he says because they are one for that reason is not ashamed to call them brothers imagine god calling your brother and you say no i'm just a man you can't come <laughs> you're god and i'm just a man no he says we are one come on somebody he says i'll declare your name to my brothers my brothers and sisters to my brethren he says in the midst of the assembly i will sing praise to you and i will put my trust in him and again he says here i am and who and the children whom god has given me come on give me some more there praise god and the children is God and says in as much then as the children have partaken the children have what the children are not flesh and blood but he says the children have partaken of flesh and blood that's what I said earlier that when you're born you're born just as human beings and look just as human beings but he says though your born look like just a bond servant and a slave you're not just slave because God predestined you God foreknew you and predestined you as children of God that he knew who you become before you were born and he has predestined that you should be conformed to the image of his son who is truly son is truly God come on now and he says you're coming into that fullness that's the fullness you're coming into do you hear this because he says the children have partaken partaking you don't say they are fresh and blood but they they have they have experienced what it is to live life in the flesh he says they are partaking of flesh and blood and he says he himself even he who is the word that became flesh he also shared in the same he put on flesh he partake of flesh and blood he lived know what it is to live in that body he says that through death because how did he experience death through that body they couldn't kill his spirit 
right so the the only thing all they were doing in the physical realm could affect the body but it couldn't affect the spirit he said that through death he might destroy in other words what he tasted through that body that we are wearing brought us to the point to receive a new one oh jesus because he came and sat where we sat at where we ate face what we face and overpowered them then he says no i'm going to let you sit where i sit oh, you like that that's why paul said we are seated in heavenly places in christ huh come on at the right hand of the father so he said if you then understand the principle then he says he had to taste of that to release those who were who through fear of death were all, all their lifetime subject to bondage we were living as slaves but he came to set us free free from sin free from the limitation and the restrictions that are in this human body grant us a new body and also free from the dominion of darkness satan and all the evil hosts that we walk as children of light amidst the darkness and still hold true to the values that god have in christ jesus amen you got it so we have to declare this word for persons to understand this is not some makeup rule god is making us into a new creation and we are saying this is more than just saying i'm created of god but more so he's saying no he's making you true children and anyone going to be children is going to be children through his word and his holy spirit it cannot be any other way because that's how the son came how did the son come into the world through the word and the holy spirit the word spoken to mary you shall be be give birth to a child though she was a virgin and she said beat unto me as you have said it and then it says the holy spirit come upon her and she conceived the word and the holy spirit and then when the child was conceived what the lord is declared this is my beloved son see the word and the holy spirit the word is there standing in the water john baptized them and the holy spirit came upon him and then the word spoke from it father spoke from heaven this is my beloved son the word and the word he says this is the process you go through the birthing process for you as children of god it is through the word and the holy spirit it is true the what then if the world reject the word how can they become sons no one can become a son of god without the word of god god the word of god is the son of god <sighs> hallelujah come on when he described christ returning he says that he is called the word of god as at revelation 7 he's called the word of god and he says he, he, he is the faithful one and he's called the king of kings and lord of lords is marked upon his thighs so he ride upon a horse and enter into this atmosphere he says the word will proceed out of his mouth like a two-edged sword and smite that antichrist and the beast and overthrow their rule in the earth is the word and the holy spirit everything in the kingdom of god is structured by the word and the holy spirit and we as children of god cannot be children of god without the word and the holy spirit come on somebody that is the key note that will make us true children of so anyone deny resist and uh, quench and resist reject the holy spirit of course cannot be children of god anyone who reject the word cannot be children of god because the the word is bearing evidence of what the father said and the holy spirit is bearing evidence to what the word says and these three work as one it's in first uh, first john 5 verse 7 it says there are three that bear record in heaven the father the word and the spirit and it says and these three are one they operate as one they are united they are not contrary one is not operating different from the other come on now it says then if you understand that principle then you will know that this is the oneness that god is bringing us into with the word and the holy spirit because what did jesus pray 
that they will be one just as you and I are one father. You in me and I in you and I in them and they in us. Come on. He's talking about that oneness with us all in one God. Come on. That's where he's talking about the glory. Right. See in John 17 verse 22 and 23. It says the glory which you have gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, you in me, and that they may be perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me, and I have loved them as you have loved me. Come on. He's talking about that oneness. Come on now. And we are brought into the family of God through the word of God and through the Holy Spirit. Huh? We cannot enter the family without that. That's why the Lord says to Nicodemus, you must be born of the water and of the spirit to enter the kingdom of God. That's John 3 verse 5. Praise God. It says, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter. The kingdom of God. And that water there is more than just having a water baptism. He's talking about the word. The work of the word is to get sin out of your life. The work of the word is to what? Get sin out of your life. The work of the spirit is to keep it out. <laughs> they both work together. For you just not to have an experience of being in the family. But to remain in the family. Come on now. And he says, now look at it born of water. And we know that the water speaks, uh, that was speaking about two baptism. One in what John was doing. John was the forerunner to Christ as one that was baptizing men for repentance of sin. And of course, John spoke of one coming after him would baptize men, not with water, but with the Holy Spirit who was speaking about Christ. So he was saying to Nicodemus, you have not received our testimony. Because Nicodemus was not baptized by John the Baptist. Nor did they stand with Jesus to receive the Holy Spirit. So you see, it was still men God was using to bring them into this family. It appeared as men by the outward appearance. But he said it was deeper than that because this was the work of God. It is the work of God to make you children of God. You cannot make yourself a child of God through no amount of good work, good behavior, niceness, kindness, and sweetness. All of that will be, be formed up as just your self-righteousness. But it is something supernaturally done by God. Huh? You can't do that of yourself. That's why I said it in St. John 1. Huh? St. John 1 verse 12 and verse 13 it says but as many as received him him who? Jesus Christ to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood come on they're not born because they're related to somebody who is in the kingdom of God by blood is not so this thing work not of the will of the flesh is not near Mere that, that, that they will in the flesh to do it. The flesh didn't want to become children of God and they just become children of God. Nor it says, nor the will of man. You can't just will it and it happen. No matter how determined you are, you can't make yourself a child of God. He said, no, this is supernaturally done. He said, just the same way, you did not determine by will to become children of your parents. It's not determined, you determine and become children of your parents. That was the work of your parents to make you a child of them. That was their work. He said, then how are you going to get into the family of God? That's his work. You have to allow him to do that work in you. It's not your work. It's his work in you that makes you a child of God. Come on. He says, not born of blood, not born of the will of flesh, not of the will of man, but born of who? Born of God. So he said, they were born, but he tell you what they are not born of before he tell you how they are born. In that verse 13, he said, who were born not of blood, 
not at the will of flesh, not at the will of man, but born of who? Of God. It's a supernatural work done by God. Are you following here? And so we are saying that to be in the family, you must be born of God. Must be born of God. It says this is supernaturally done by the word and the Holy Spirit. All the word requires of you is your cooperation. Is your what? Because he's not forcing you into a son whether you want to be a son or not. He's not forcing you into this. This is something you must truly desire and earnestly seek after. That when he's manifesting that you won't be an opposing force to what he's doing and undoing what he's doing in you because of your behavior, response, or attitude that is setting you at odds with him. Come on now. So he says, this is something supernaturally done by God. Hallelujah. And God intend that those who have the kingdom must be his children. His offspring. Come on somebody. You remember we were reading about that in Galatians 4. And we are saying that this is not something of the flesh nor blood. Because consider then, if it's just a flesh and a blood, then Ishmael will be the covenant seed. But we speak of that in Galatians 4. Paul wrote about the two covenants as the, 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 in reference to Abraham's two sons. He said Abraham had two sons, not one. Come on now. Galatians 4, you dear. So he says, he says, for it is written that Abraham had what? Two sons, one by a bondwoman and the other by a through man. Now both of them came from his body. But they came through two different women. He says he who was of the bond woman. That's the slave girl. Hagar. Was born according to the flesh. He did that from his own natural self effort and ability. But he of the free woman. He said that was not because of his ability. Because the one who was his free woman was his wife Sarah who was barren from her youth and now she is old. She passed the period of having children, gone through menopause and her womb is dead. So it was when it wasn't dead it was barren. And now it's not only barren but it's dead. So it meant that there's no physical potency and ability Abraham can do to get her pregnant. This was supernaturally done. By the word and the spirit. In other words, there's a word given to Abraham. You will have this child by that same wife, Sarah. And he believed it. And the spirit brought that word into manifestation. Come on. And then he's saying, which are symbols? So he says, this is a symbol. In other words, though that story is true as much as it testifies to this I'm telling you about now. That is also true. He says they are symbols. For they are. What the Lord says. They are allegories. He says for these are the two covenants. One from Mount Sinai. Which gives birth to bondage. Which is Hagar. Come on talking about the slave woman. And what it, prom what it produced. He was talking about Mount Sinai. And we know Mount Sinai was in the place. Where they received the law. But we know from 1 Timothy 1 verse 8 to 10. He says, who was the law for? The law is for sinners. And so he says, sinners are slaves. They are in bondage. That's what it yields. Bondage. He says, for Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Correspond to Jerusalem. Which now is. And, the, and is in bondage with her children. Those in Jerusalem said over there, they're in bandage with their children. But he said, but Jerusalem above, he's not talking about the one over there uh, that corresponds with Arabia. He said, no, the one that is above is the mother of us all. Mother of us all, speaking of those who are in Christ. He said, there is a heavenly Jerusalem. There is one that God is the builder and maker of. That will come in the earth. That John said. I saw that city coming down. 
coming down where in the earth come on so it says there's that one that is the mother of us all yeah for it is said it is written rejoice O barren who was the barren it was sarah's wife was the barren ish ish um, agar was not barren she was a young girl slave girl but she was very much potent she could have a dozen for me abraham <laughs> wouldn't twitch at it spit them out like yeah, what watermelon seed yes man because she's a young virgin and she got she can have a lot of children for him but he says is not that one the lord chose the lord said rejoice oh barren she was the barren one sarah he says you who do not bear break forth and shout you who are not in labor for the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband the desolate can have a whole lot more but he says who then was the one who god made covenant with the barren one that became that had that child isaac sarah producing that child so he says we are we brethren huh? as isaac was our children of what are we children of the slave woman no he said we are children of promise in other words we are children of the word that is manifested and come in its fullness through the power of the holy spirit did you hear that he said we are not children of god by human flesh and effort as was hagar and the fruit that came from our ishmael that came to isaac as a son he says uh -uh, god didn't make covenant with that one come on give me some more he says but as he who was born according to the flesh that was ishmael then persecuted who was born according to the spirit that was isaac so ishmael was persecuting isaac even so it is now he says those who are doing the self-effort still persecute those who the power of the word and the holy spirit is working in come on somebody he says according to the spirit even so he says nevertheless what does the scripture say cast out the bond woman and her son for what the son of the bond woman in other words those who are still my god in bondage to the self-effort and the self-righteousness that they're trying to do their best though they know they're messing up on all side because their best is not good enough it's self-righteousness those who rely on that to gain it he says they will not be here with the son of the free woman they will not share in the inheritance come on because you don't get this inheritance huh by the works of the flesh you get this inheritance by the what the work are the fruit of the spirit come on somebody so he says so then brethren we are not the children of the bond woman but who are we children of of the free come on now huh so he then declared to us that that's who we are in christ now how are we set free are to be children of the free he says the son has to set us free the son is the same word of god that became flesh and dwell among us come on and he says those who receive him he gives them the right to become children of god so he says then if we're going to become sons huh if we are going to become sons he said we must know this is done supernaturally by god it is the work of the word and the holy spirit ah uh, he's not just trying to do something out of flesh and say that will do this is the best i can do the lord no i'm only human no because if he was gonna go by your only human talk you would need to be born again because the only human talk only identifies one birth being born of men but when he says born again he's now speaking about being born of god hello somebody that is a whole new level they would say a whole new child of fish eh? 
hallelujah so it says you got to understand then that is bringing you into a new scope of understanding your mind must be renewed to this and the spirit is there to bear witness with your spirit that it is so come on somebody so if you resist this spirit and resist the word then how can you be children of god remember we say we are children of god by the work of the word as a promise and the work of the holy spirit that brings the fulfillment of that promise is the seal unto the redemption of our body and is the guarantee for us to come into the fullness as true sons of god come on now you got it right so we're going along to let you understand the dynamics of god's kingdom being expanded and he says he's expanding his family and you are being included ah huh? come on somebody give him praise in here hallelujah are you glad about that oh my god i'm glad till my glad back boss praise god he says so this says the holy spirit is called the spirit of promise the holy spirit is called what spirit look at that in ephesians 1 verse 13 to 14 he says in him you also trusted after you heard what you heard the word of truth uh, the gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed you were sealed with what the holy spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance you can't get the inheritance without him he says is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchase possession come on the time when this body shall be changed from mortal to mortality come on to the praise of his glory come on now hello somebody so you're being brought into the family man and you say you can't remain a slave and be part of this family if the son set you free from sin then you're no longer a slave but you're a son hallelujah huh that is declared in what saint john 8 verse 30 to 36 praise god so he told them that you know he's not just saying i believe in him because here he is in saint john 8 verse 30 he's saying he knows that there are many jews there that believed in him and he spoke to the jews who believed in him in verse 31 to 33 but their response showed that they were believing in him by what the signs and wonders that he did but do you not believing in the teaching he has which is about the kingdom of god and many will say i believe in jesus but don't believe in the kingdom no? don't believe in the teaching about the kingdom and or are they going to inherit what they don't believe in because it's not everything they go to inherit and i know many of them believe they're going to inherit that but, <laughs> but the word of god said it heaven is not for us man you got to understand this is bigger than heaven come on somebody this is about the kingdom of god and the kingdom of god is not just heaven everything under god's creative platform is his kingdom everything under the spear of his rule and he says that you are an ear to that ah so if you ain't feel glad about heaven already why not feel glad about heaven and earth my god what do you think say so you go to heaven and earth get destroyed and you only stay in heaven forever no the lord said uh -uh. he's he's putting a merger between heaven and earth and it's going to become one place you better hear this thing so he says then jesus said to those jews who believed in him if you abide in my word that's my teaching uh, he's the word they're gonna abide in him but he says don't just say abide in him but in what i command you to do in what i teach you huh because what you are being discipled by him and you can't be discipled by him without without sticking to his teaching so he says you are my disciples indeed if you do that and you will know the truth and what the truth will make you free then they said to him they answered him and said we are abraham's descendants we have never been in bondage to anyone so they think he's talking about being in bondage to someone and he said we've never been in bondage to anyone how can you say you will be made free 
In other words, free from what? If you're not in slavery, what are we going to be free from? And what did the Lord say? The Lord said, Most assuredly, I say to you, to who did he say to? To them, he says, to you, I say to whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. See, you're not free. As long as you're committing sin, you're not free. You're a slave. And he says, slave cannot inherit the kingdom. Just the same way he said, the bond woman and her slave son cannot inherit the kingdom. So he said, but the son of promise, the one who is brought by the word and the spirit, that one will inherit it. And the one who is brought by sin will not inherit it. Come on now. You watch that. You watch what the Lord says there. He says, a slave does not abide in the house forever. Don't you read that from Galatians 4? Where it says, cast out the slave woman and her son. They will not stay in Abraham's house. Abraham was told by his wife. And Abraham prayed to the Lord about it. And the Lord said, yes, do what your wife says. What she says is right. Put them out. They will not share in the inheritance of the free son. What is the inheritance of the free son? The kingdom of God. So he says, there will not be heirs with the one who is declared up because what? They have not that same life. The life of the slave is not the life of the son. The life of the slave is what? Is not the life of the son. He says, the, the, the son will not, ab the son abides in the house forever. Huh? But a slave does not abide in the house forever. Why? Slaves die and new slaves come take them place. But he said in the father's house, sons have permanent residence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you like that? Come on, somebody. And how would the son stay forever if the son don't live forever? So that's why he says he's giving them the son's eternal life but he doesn't give eternal life to slaves slaves are not allowed to stay in the house their time there is temporary but the time for sons are permanent he says if the son makes you free free from what free from sin because his sin makes you a slave then he says you are free indeed you become true sons that's why he says bringing many sons to glory. Come on. You become free indeed. And then you know you, are, you have become a legitimate son to receive the, 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 the benefits and the estate of your father. Come on now. Because that is proving that you are truly of him. And partakers of what is his. Come on somebody. You got it. No, 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 man. You have to get this thing, man, and understand that God don't have some wishy-washy plan for you. This world may just want food and money and clothes and bling bling and, and dine and wine and live like swine. Hello. But the thing is that the Lord is saying, I have bigger plans for you. I made the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. And I made all that is in it. And I'm commanding all this to be under, under your care and under your authority. Because this is the same power I've, I'm releasing to you to share with me in the kingdom. In the reign over all that is mine. Come on. No wonder Paul was having to rack up some bridging in 1 Corinthians 6 and tell the man, you don't know who you is, man. Don't you know that you will judge the world? And that you will judge the angels. They didn't know that. Because they just think you know. Going to go to heaven and rest. <laughs> he said no man. It's a kingdom you're coming to inherit. You need to understand yourself. Understand you are kings. Not just by God giving you a nice name. To call you kings and queens. But you don't really have no kingdom. You know like when some parents see the children. Yo you nice good princess. Nice good prince. King and queen. But they got no kingdom. No, the Lord ain't calling them so to flatter them. The Lord is giving them a kingdom. He says, do, not, do you not know that the saints will judge the world? There it is in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 2. If the world be judged by you, he says to the church at Corinth. 
if the world be judged by you are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters do you not know that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life so when he talk about judge angels he's talking about things that pertain into the life the age to come eternal life and he says then oh you can't judge things that pertain to mortal life when you have eternal life if you have God kind of life or you can't judge things that pertain to man oh my god he said you, 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 your judgment is tainted man hallelujah you, in other words Paul is saying you're carnal you're still thinking like mere men and not children of God <laughs> come on now he said you have to get another word man come on somebody to know who you are who you are and what you're here to do hello you don't need no approval no applause from the world to do it the world said that he has given you the inner witness the spirit bears witness with your spirit who you are and you must live in a way that others huh, can know indeed say this is the true product this is the genuine article this is this is no no counterfeit count no 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 ah huh? no fraud come on now this is the real deal hallelujah we said if you bear the nature and spirit of christ man it must show glory to god it's more than just talk and wish wishful thinking you must you must be the reality of that life within you so though the outward man perish the inward man the inward being the inward being of who you are hallelujah must grow in knowledge and in faithfulness hallelujah in the knowledge of god and the demonstration and manifestation of his presence in your life what you say so this says god appoint trainers because that's what he was saying in galatians 4 there, there must be trainers appointed to those who are ears for them to come into the fullness of who they are otherwise they'll be disqualified you know, because they didn't do the training to come possess the inheritance and the father have an appointed time for them to possess it the father what an appointed time but who are the trainers that god sent out to train us uh, uh, oh, you know the thing you've been listening man hallelujah that's what jesus gave to the church ephesians 4 verse 11 to 16 he says he himself who, is, who gave it jesus and he says he himself in other words he didn't call a board meeting and this to decide it this was something he chose to do of his own come on to personally unpick those who would do such work in the church he himself gave some to the apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers for what the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry come on for the edifying of the body of christ the what the body of christ which is the church must come in the full understanding and knowledge of who they are and how to carry out their role effectively in the land as true sons and daughters of god eh? he says till we all come to the unity of the faith huh and we know said if you know why did i say no uh -uh. Uh, some they say three some they say one some they say baptized not father son and holy ghost some they say jesus only and some say not jesus only again but jesus christ and some say not jesus christ but the yeshua hamashia god in a hebrew the lord of mercy on them and some say you know it's sunday some say it's saturday yeah. this exchange with sabbath for sunday oh lord of mercy yeah and some say yes man all you need to do is just believe on the lord and be saved you're baptized and you shall be saved 
And some say, no, okay, no, 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 no. You need the Holy Ghost. You can't just baptize so and just be saved. Otherwise, John the Baptist ministry would still be continuing and Jesus wouldn't come. So where's the one who baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire? That John spoke about. Come on now. So you see, there the, the are differences there that are stretching us apart because we need to come to a place of agreement. And that place of agreement is only done through the word and the Holy Spirit. It's not done through self-effort. In other words, I cannot organize and orchestrate and plan and structure all the churches to meet and get them to agree. It is not something done by self-effort. It's something that the Lord will do through his word and through his Holy Spirit. He's already unpicking those out of those organizations that are truly submitting to this message in spite of those around them. That is supernaturally done because I can make somebody a child of God. But God can. As he did for me, he can do it for you. Hallelujah. But anyone who comes, he said, but they must first deny themselves. There's a point where they must understand humility is necessary for promotion. And next point, they must understand that they must take up the cross and follow him. They must commit to him in loyalty, even unto death. Even their life must not be a hindrance to obey him. That's why he says, take up that cross. The cross is not some nice pendant on your chest to say I'm a Jesus freak no he says you need to understand that's where the flesh is going to burn that's where the flesh is going to be afflicted and buffeted and smitten and bruised the flesh is going to be mortified the deeds of the flesh are going to be put out of commission for the work of the Holy Spirit to be perfected in you as a true son of God huh so that's what the Hebrew writer was talking about in Hebrews 12. Hallelujah. He's saying that you, you have not suffered. Huh? What's that? Hebrews 12 verse 1. Verse 4. You have not suffered uh, uh, as much as to what? You have not resisted to bloodshed. Hebrews 12 verse 4. He said you have not resisted unto bloodshed. Christ resisted even to the shedding of his blood. And he said... The Hebrew writer was saying to these Hebrews, you have not gone that far yet, striving against sin. You're not striving with sin, you're striving against sin. He says, you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. Oh, that exhortation speak to us. He says, my son do not despise the discipline, the chastening of the Lord. Huh? Nor be discouraged. So he said, don't despise the process God put you through to make your true son. Nor get fed up or, or withdrawn and lose heart because of the rebuke that comes with it. Because any form of, 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 of resistance will be met with rebuke. You know? Like when a parent is disciplining a child and and the child want to have a fit and cry and make up a bag of knives and they put on more beating on them and say, be quiet. But they'll feel it and not shut up. He says, this is a chase. He said, don't be discouraged when you are rebuked. Well, I didn't do nothing wrong. I was doing everything I said. And I can't understand why you do that to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not moved by that. Because Jesus didn't do nothing wrong. And he endured it. He endured it. Did he? Of course he did. And the scripture go on to tell us that he did too. Come on. Somebody. Hello. Hmm? That's right, he said, consider him who endured such hostility. That's in verse 3. From sinners against himself. He didn't sin. So why was he enduring such hostility from them upon himself? Couldn't he cry out to God and stop it? He says, y have you considered him? Have you thought about him? Who you see you're following? 
That's what the Hebrew writer is saying. Have you considered him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself? He said, if you consider that, you would not become weary or discouraged in your soul. So he says, when they forget what the master went through, then they start to have a fit. I don't deserve that. I don't believe they should be treating me like that. Everything I do I wrong. Every time they come down hard on me. Nobody understands me. Nobody loves me. <sighs> That's not going anywhere as a child of God. You're not going to become a true son of God behaving like that. That was not Christ's response. That, that's the behavior of flesh crying out to get out of the process of training. That is flesh crying out for Cree <laughs> to say, Stop it. I don't want to go through this anymore. That's flesh crying out. And he says, What you're taking the cross for? You think Jesus could take the cross and tell him, say, Stop nailing me, man. He said, What the cross is for? You think it's a pendant on your chest? He said, You're coming through this to learn something. And it's going to cost you something in the flesh for you to be fully learned in your spirit. So he says, For whom the Lord loves, he what? He chastens. And what? scourges you know what it is to scourge to flog violently scourge every son whom he receives did he receive christ yes of course when he came here he received him and he returned but did he return without being searched not at all come on somebody you look at verse 7 continue he says then, if you endure chastening, if you what? He says, because the Son of God endured it, and you are coming as those who have been disciples to him and trained to be sons. Then he says, if you endure it, then God deals with you as with sons. For he says, what son is there whom a father does not chasten? And notice he never said, whom the father he says any father have a son that don't chase that son what kind of son that going to be come on he says if you are without chastening of which what all have become parties in other words when he say all that all include jesus christ as his son you know because he says every son go through it and Jesus was not excluded. Though he did not sin. Come on. He says, then you are illegitimate and not sons. In other words, if you don't go through that, it will prove you are not one of God's. Because all were of God's. Go through it. He says, furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us. And we pay them respect. Well, many of them don't pay them respect nowadays but that's another one he says shall we not much more huh shall we what not much more readily be in subjection to who the father of spiritual living says oh discipline in your flesh they discipline your flesh what you what did they destroy your flesh beat you till you're dead that don't destroy your spirit but it says, if you resist the Father, you know, both body and soul, going into hell. Because it will prove you are not one of his. To resist him, you will be not one of his. And it says, all those who are his, endure this from him. For they, his early fathers, he's talking about in verse 10. They, early fathers, they discipline us for a few days. They chase us as seem best to them. They chase us till they feel say that's good enough. And he says what? But he, God, chase us for what? For our profit. He does it for, for what is best for us. Not what just best for him. But is what for best for us. Huh? For our profit. That we may be what? Partakers of his holiness. He says, now no chastening seem to be joyful. Whether it's from the earthly father or heavenly father. 
He says, none of it is joyful. Come on. For present. But is what? It's painful. But he says, nevertheless, there's an afterward. It's not done arbitrarily. I done just sporadic or haphazardly as a respond to a consequence of a situation. But he says, no, this is part of your training. I'll talk to somebody here. Tell him, say, this is part of your training. Uh, come on. But he says, but if you endure it afterwards, it what? It yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Hallelujah. To those who what? Who have been trained. That means you can skip the training. But, but you won't get the same result. But those who endure it. There is a result. Uh, come on somebody. And he's saying this is for those who are true sons. Huh? Huh? Praise God. So we can't be uh, giving excuses for our sinful conduct. And then saying, oh, I'm a son of God. God, no, I love him. You know, like well, what the brother did, he sing, I love you forever. I love you forever. Oh, he said, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. And they say, even if I mess up, I love you. Even, even though I fail you, I love you. No, that's not what the Bible says. That's what you're saying, but that's not what the word of God says. Word of God said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. You obey if you love. Your love is shown through obedience. Faith without obedience is a dead faith. That doesn't profit anything to the hearer nor to the user. Because it says it must produce corresponding actions. That would be like a woman living with a man that's saying, I love you. Do I face you in your eye? I love you. I spit in your face, but I love you. I kick you with my 12 foot beat, boot, but you know I love you. Praise God. Just stay right here. I'm going to show you some more love. Praise God. That is not love. You know that with man, but you think differently for God. I think you can throw any trash and give God and say, That's good enough for him. When God demonstrated his love for you through human flesh, you cannot demonstrate your love for him through that flesh. With the power of his Holy Spirit and the word. No man, he says, you better step up to this thing. And understand, he's calling you to follow the demonstration given to you. Come on. Hello. He didn't just demonstrate his love for you to bow down and say, Oh great you are, none of us can do it, only you alone. No, would not be disciples if we cannot do it. He said, if we believe in him, the works that he do, he will do it too. And what? Greater works than these we shall do because he go to be with the Father. In other words, we are getting double support now to get the job done. Come on, somebody. And he says, it is doable. It's not no mission impossible. Come on. Hello. It is mission possible. Because with God, all things are possible. And if he dwells in you, then that life must manifest in you. Come on. The God kind of life is a life of holiness. Is a life of righteousness. Is a life of truth. The church is called the pillar and ground of truth. Come on now. Yeah. Church is not supposed to be some deep and fall back, stray away children. And that is saying, well, we fall down and we get up because we are just sinners who fall down and get up. That's what saints are. What a life on the pit of hell. Nowhere in the word of God say a saint is a sinner. He said the saints were sinners, now saved by grace. They are not saved in sin, they are saved from sin. That's what makes them saints. And so somebody lied to you and tell you some compromising message that Paul calls a perversion of the gospel. And that is not showing the kingdom of God ruling in your heart at all. And the kingdom ruling within you must put sin out. 
and put Christ on the throne of your heart to rule in righteousness and justice and peace. Yeah? That God can see and say, well done. God can see the mess up and say, well done. Well done for your mess. That's not the life that Christ lived. And the, life. Christ, the spirit of Christ is not in you. Then he say, you are none of his. Come on now. It's Romans 8 verse 9. Uh, Paul said in Romans 8 verse 8 and 9 he says those who are in the flesh cannot please God you know? but he says but if you he says you are not in the flesh but in the spirit how is that so if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you say so if the spirit of God dwells in you you're not no ordinary person walking up and down the road man you know what it is for the spirit of God to dwell in you Come on, he's talking about the spirit of God dwelling in every man. No, that's not true. He says, if the spirit of God doesn't dwell in you, if you don't have the spirit of Christ, he says, you are not his. And that's why you say, depart from me. I never knew you. Because you can have some knowledge of him and use the power of his name to do miracles, signs, and wonders. But where's that power to stop you from sinning? Where's that inward witness? Hallelujah. And he says that inward witness is needed for you to be counted and qualified as one who is of his family. It's not just talk. It's not hype. It's bearing the substance. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. And it is the evidence of the things not seen. It is not the unseen. It is the evidence of the unseen. Though persons don't see God and see Christ around us, walking up and down and laying hands and prophesying and declaring, they must know and see Christ in you. You are the evidence that Christ still lives. And if you're still marring and wallowing in sin, how is that evidence that he has taken away all your sin? Come on. It's either you're for him or you're against him. Either you're gathering to him or you're causing people to scatter and say this is all a fraud. It's all a lie. We got to know which side we're on. Make sure your election is sure. That you're on side with the Lord. Hello somebody. It's not good just to say the Lord is on my side. Are you on his side? Come on. It's not good enough just to say the Lord loves me. Do you love him? There's a partnership that is needed. For this to see its fullness. Are you willing to embrace it? Come on. That is what the Lord wants to come into. To be a part of his family. To be a part of his kingdom. Huh? To share in his holiness. To share in his righteousness. To be engraved with new bodies. That can facilitate the environment that he's going to put you in. To be in the immediate proximity of his glory and his power. No flesh can withstand that. Flesh and blood cannot maintain or stand in the presence. And the fullness of the presence of God. But he says he's going to glorify you. Huh? Give you a new body. And I said in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 5. That for this very thing God is preparing you. Huh? God is preparing you for this very thing. And he has sent trainers to get you into it. You need to study on this thing. And take heed to the word that the Lord is declaring to you. About the kingdom of God. Come on somebody. Huh? Praise God. All right, that's all we have for tonight. But we give you a chance to question and to make comments. I want to hear what the saints are saying. Praise God. And give them a chance to make an input in what is being said here. Hallelujah. So those online, you're free to ask your questions, whether it's of this topic or other topics. We also deal with that too here in the Christ Kingdom Studies. Every Wednesday night we give chance a person to pose questions and deal with them as they come. So take the time to type them out quickly before we are off the air. Don't wait until everything stops to do so. Otherwise you might find 
that you're off the list praise god but we'll adjust them as they come amen praise god hallelujah yes your time good night um apostle um yes, that, that last word that you gave about us being the living word basically being christ in the earth i remember monday night i was looking back on some notes that you taught us on that before and you said that we are the word that become flesh mm -hmm. i never look at it like that before you know i always when i heard the word become flesh i always talk about okay it's jesus it's jesus but i didn't see myself as the word becoming flesh and the promises right. of god being fulfilled in me as me being um the word in flesh so thank you for that praise yeah the spirit of promise raises us up as children of promise and that is all done through the word and the holy spirit like i said that every child of god comes in the family of god through the word and the holy spirit including christ comes in the wind by the word and the holy spirit the word spoken and the word fulfilled by the conception through the holy spirit and so he says the same way we as children of god come into that same grace hallelujah through the him who is the firstborn and we say that he can't be firstborn if he's the only one he's referring firstborn because he says others are coming huh and he said it's not a shame to call us virgin because we all are one we are all of one the word the one who justifies and the one being justified huh praise god hallelujah yes man anymore praise god you know you must have something to say here we don't want no dummy spirit in this place we expect to hear response from the people here hallelujah and hear response in the house praise god praise god yes go ahead simone mcpherson yes amen training for the time to come where persecution is going to be more fiery when the world will put us through the courts to deny christ yes mm. the cares of the world can be distressing and a scheme from satan to distract from the word of god and his goodness in our lives we have to rely on the holy spirit and the word of god to hold on to the hope and increase An increase in faith okay yes Simone, thank you for your comment praise god we appreciate that praise god that's what it's all about we want to ensure that persons are listening and keen on what we are teaching here as we're not here to waste time and i count that i'm doing very valuable and i believe what god has given me to pour in the body of christ is very valuable and god told us as apostles not to cast birds before swine you know so we're looking for persons that value this and those that value it will respond praise god hallelujah bless the lord yes man so that's why we says is the word of the kingdom the word of the kingdom is talking about god's dominance god's governance over all the spear of what is under his power and his control and he's saying that we as ears have share in that and that is awesome it is, then he says then if you have such a sheer in uh, in what is god's my god come on man then what manner of a life should you live as children of god hallelujah he says in ephesians 5 verse 1 be imitators of god as is their children so he says you can't just sit down and just say i'll try no it's not try he give you something to try he give you something to do it's more than just giving it an effort he's saying hey the very life of god the spirit of god in you is there to empower you to do it come on his divine power is he said is working in us both to will and to do his good pleasure both to what will and to do his good pleasure so he says it's not just up to you to just try out your flesh to do it he says he has empowered you to do it the only one can stop it is you come on hallelujah so it's not even the devil is not even those around you come on it has to do with your position and response to the word 
and the Holy Spirit. He says that's the only point that can be an interest to you. How you respond to the word and the Holy Spirit. And we are expecting that people who have the response to the word, it must show. Now that I you know it was in my heart. No, if it's in your heart, it's going to come out to your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speaks. Come on now. Come on, give him the glory. Praise God. Mm -hmm. As it relates to um, the chastening apostle. Yes. Question. Um, Jesus endured such hostility at the hands of sinners. Yes. All right. When, when going through chastening, do you, at which point do you say, is there a point? That's the question. Is there a point where you can resist some things, what persons are doing to you? Or you just go through and just say, all right, just endure it until the end. Or is there a point where it's not chasing and it's just the devil doing something and you have to... Once you are being led by the Holy Spirit, then remember that's the, it's the Holy Spirit doing it and it's not you. Then you are not the one deciding which one to cut off and which one to endure. That's the key. You know, that's how you say if it is based on self-effort, then that's what is going to come to. Going to come to you or to yourself. Deciding whether you're going to take this or not. That is self-effort. You know? But if you are being led by the Holy Spirit, then it is not about what you want. You know? It's about what the Holy Spirit wants. And when it is not of God for you to endure, the Spirit itself will stand up against it. You know, like when they do, there are certain men that resisted when Paul was teaching them the word. And Paul didn't sit down and be, Paul said, man, we didn't even bear with them for an hour. You know, so, but it's the Holy Spirit that made him do that. It's not him take a decision to do that. That's the thing we're saying. It's not, in other words, it wasn't probed or prompted by the flesh. Because that's what Paul is saying. You are not in the flesh if the Spirit of God dwells in you. So you say, did the Holy Spirit tell you when they were behaving like that to respond in such a way? You know, so you have to understand you know, that they, when you allow the Holy Spirit to do his work, then you, the spirit will get cross at certain things they are noisy spirit and it's, <laughs> you get to what I'm saying the spirit say stop it and rebuke some things and 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 withstand certain things from happening at a time the Holy Spirit will just say shut your mouth be quiet you know but the Holy Spirit won't be quiet with everything as we, that's, that's why we say there's a place of false humility where persons try to appear. Huh? Appear that way when he says, uh -uh. that's not Holy Spirit because God don't always speak in soft, quiet voice. No. Hello. And he don't, he don't always sound welcoming and warm and pleasant. No, the times the word of God say he got angry. And he rebuked them. So he spoke firmly to them. Come on now. So, so it was the same spirit. As Jesus says, without the Holy Spirit, I do nothing. Huh? Yeah. So when Jesus they called some men white was sepulchre, it was the Holy Spirit, you know. It's the Holy Spirit when I was calling him hypocrites. He wasn't saying hypocrites. No, he said hypocrite. Yes, so he said. And it's the Holy Spirit speaking to him to call him that. So you see, God doesn't operate in one mode or one tone alone. God is a dynamic living, always knowing being. And so when his spirit is working within us, we know. And the spirit rise up and say, hey, stop that foolishness. They have to hear it. Come on. All right, so, so when Jesus was speaking, his words were not always pleasant to the ears of those who was listening. And God will not always speak that way either. 
Hello. Hallelujah. Yeah, man, because you remember what the, Jesus spoke about the man that was building the big barn. And he built a big barn and he tear the one and build one bigger one. And he tear and he build one bigger one because the increase of what was coming in. And when, when it, what, 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 what he said, the Lord said to him, the Lord said to him, Thou fool! <laughs> the Lord said, Oh, you man. You, I pity you. I will not even raise my voice at you. No. I have to understand the spirit. So, there's a point where the spirit will rebuke and reprove things that people do on their position. And it will call for firm and sharp rebuke. Yeah, man. You could have just said, just, he didn't say, well, you know, what you did was foolish. No, he said, fool! <laughs> no, no, no man, Holy Spirit can't make call nobody. Fool, you idiot! Stay there. You wait till soon, you hear more from the Spirit. All right, so you have to understand where it is because the Holy Spirit doesn't, it is the Spirit of God, you know. And God don't condone everything. God is not putting up with everything. So there's a point where he will speak out. There's a certain point where he just said to the disciples, where is your faith? At that time, in speaking out and saying, man, Satan, get thee behind me. You know? mm. And it never nice to his disciples hearing them speak to them and saying, Satan. Right, so you have to understand that there's a point where the Holy Spirit, where you know that it's the life of God within you. Huh? It's, a life. it's not you doing it of yourself. That's why Paul is saying, I, I am crucified with Christ. It's not, I'm not doing it of myself anymore. It's no more I. Huh? I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. He says I'm living a life in the flesh. In this human body. Huh? But I live by the faith in that life in me. The one who says who lives in him. Christ. I live by the faith of who is living in me. Huh? Who gave himself. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Come on now. You got it? Yes, yeah, so I guess you, you, wherever you sense that when flesh wants to get involved in it, there is a, there's a sense of a feeling of filthiness, dirtiness. Uh, there's, there's a distaste that is coming with it that you know that that is flesh. Because if you are dead to this thing, this thing don't rise up and you feel comfortable with it. Huh? Now what did Paul say? Paul didn't say, you are not always in the flesh. He said, you are not in the flesh. If the spirit of God dwells in you, you are not in it. Come on, somebody. Huh? Hallelujah. Come on now. So there's no point then what happens will make you sin. You got it? No point what happens will make you sin because you are not, what the flesh produces what? Sin. Come on now. Hello. Yeah, being angry is not sin. And, and expressing say your anger is your angry is not sin either. But he said you must not sin in doing so. Be angry and sin not. Huh? Right, so there is a need for you to know where you being aware of that life in you. You won't be worrying about what flesh can do because you're not you're not mindful of the flesh. What you're mindful of is the spirit. Got it? Praise God. Any more questions or comments you want to add to this hallelujah good night apostle this is nastasia foster okay miss foster 
Tonight's teaching is a continuation of yesterday's teaching. Yes, what stood is. out to me is that we have to rely on the Holy Spirit and not so much on self. Also, we cannot have the Word and not have the Spirit. And we cannot have the Holy Spirit without the Word. So we really have to deny ourselves consistently and become as a child to really come into the life of God. Mm, yeah, that's true, Sister Foster. That is true. We have to approach it as children. As Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to be great in the kingdom, he must come as this child. You know, they, they can't come like they will know it already. And there's not much for you to teach them. That kind of attitude, don't go far in the kingdom. You have to understand that you must come with us like a child that comes like a sponge to suck up what the Lord is pouring into you. And you will truly draw what God is pouring out through his word and his Holy Spirit and be built up in the fullness of Christ. Huh? Praise God. So there's no room for error and failure and all kind of backsliding and, the, and all kind of waywardness. He says, no, that must put off. It's not something that must accompany your work. It's something he said must be discarded from your work. Huh? Praise God. Anymore, anymore. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And that's it. Well, praise God. Hope that was enough for you. We don't hear any more comments or so what we deal with them as they come praise god and we don't see any more comments or question dear so we're moving on praise god come on if those hands to jesus where we are right now father we just thank you for your word and for your holy spirit you are the one that makes this fruitful and profitable for us because without you all this is in vain but when we connect with the life that you're releasing to us through your word and your spirit my God, our innermost being is being conformed to the very image of your son. And his son loves you and loves your word and loves your spirit. And it, my God is the fullness of the God that dwells in him bodily. And even so you want the fullness to dwell in us bodily, O oh God. Hallelujah, that we persons can know we are of that different kind. Hallelujah, the God kind. Hallelujah, that your grace and favor is overflowing every limitation and boundaries in our life and bringing us into new and greater and fresher expressions of who you are hallelujah as you manifest yourself greater and greater in us hallelujah we yield our bodies to you as a living sacrifice hallelujah that it is used for your purpose hallelujah so our minds are being renewed hallelujah we are being transformed hallelujah to know and to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And so we thank you for what you're unveiling to us. For you say the mysteries of the kingdom there for us. Hallelujah. You have chosen and now believe. And so we pray that as we meditate on these things, the fullness of them will be manifested more and more in our lives. As we yield to your leadership day by day in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise right now. Hallelujah. So, Father, we pray that you will confirm your word with signs with wonders now. Every sickness and every disease, every dysfunction in our bodies, in our lives. Hallelujah. In any era, in our, in our bodies or in our minds or in our spirit, we be removed from us right now. Your Holy Spirit and your word is sufficient to destroy to expel and to reject and to flush out everything that the enemy has sown in our flesh and our being that is not of you because you are God, you are light and in you there is no darkness at all. So let the purity of your presence flow through us, O oh God. Hallelujah and be rooted in us. Hallelujah to the overflow that others will see and know. Hallelujah that we are truly children of God. We give you the praise and the glory. And give you all the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give him the praise. Praise God. We started a little late, but we tried to catch up with as much word we could give you within the span of time we have here tonight. Hope that you really take the word to heart and allow the word to marinate in your spirit, to bear fruit and fruit 
and much fruit and fruit that remains amen praise god we're going to say the last note to those who are watching online and then give you within that time to sow as the lord has given laid on your heart to do so praise god hallelujah father we just thank you for the word and we praise you for those who are watching we pray that you will cause them to the atmosphere wanting to be shifted now by your anointing and by your power and move them into a higher and greater expression and communion and fellowship with you through your word and your holy spirit and establish them in your house in Jesus' name amen praise god those who are watching are watching increase in faith deliverance ministry international we are three east street montego bay jamaica really we are really interested for you to know christ and the power of his resurrection god wants you to know him in a very real and personal way not as a stranger not as some in some subject that is just part of his creation that is just subject to him but as truly part of his family hallelujah and he wants you to know him as your true father hallelujah and wants you to have a true relationship with him as his true son and so i want you to come into that relationship you want to know more about this gospel called the gospel of the kingdom you have a book out there called the gospel of the kingdom the gospel that jesus preached you can order it online through amazon.com go on amazon.com and type in the search box richard v fagan and of course the book will come up and of course you can order it anywhere in the world others have been ordering it and been finding it a real booster for the faith and relationship that they must have in christ jesus and been exploding on new levels of experience in christ and so want you to also share the same what god has deposited in me is not just for me and not just for this house but for everyone in the body of christ to know to taste and see and to experience the goodness of the lord in greater levels and we believe as the day get closer to the day of his coming of his return this will increase more and more god still has more to reveal to us amen and so more is coming to the body of christ to equip them and further establish them as the glorious church in the earth that god intend and purpose that they should be in christ jesus amen praise god so you want to see more of the teaching of course you can look for us on facebook send a friend's request to richard v fagan and be plugged into the live stream every time you go live we have five live stream services per week so you can be a lot of document lot of source that will be pouring out fresh word and revelation to you about the kingdom of god and about god the mystery of that kingdom of god wants to unfold it in your life for you to walk and to experience life eternal life on new levels even now in this flesh praise god a taste of the age to come praise god and so we encourage you to do that hallelujah and experience greater volumes of revelation in the spirit hallelujah which god has proportioned for you in christ jesus so you can see more of the teaching there on facebook or you can also look for it on youtube look for a youtube channel and subscribe you'll also see the recordings there with the verses of course that are attached to give you more insight into what we are saying hallelujah that's been edited and placed in for you to get more substance there and also you can look for our website it's increasing faith intl dot org that's increasing faith intl dot org you can also know more about the ministry know more about us and also you can for those who been asking how do we sow to this ministry you can sow to the website all the information is there at the bottom of the page the different options that are available to you you know that you've been enriched by this word you can of course connect to us connect with our vision and help to sow to us to reach more with this word it's not about religion but it's about the kingdom and that more will come to know christ not just christianity many know christianity and don't really know christ they know the religion that is formed about christ but they don't know him that truly that was talked about and so wanted to know him and that's what the word is really about he wanted to come into that fellowship amen praise god and truly our fellowship is with god and with his son jesus christ and i want you to share the same praise god so we encourage you to get into the word and let the lord have his way in your life any further question you can call me richard figan at 876-839-9390 or 876-557-2427 looking forward to hear from you and to build your most holy faith in the lord until next time be strong in the lord and the power of his might are you blessed tonight 
Praise God. Praise God. I'm blessed to be here with you and to share the word with you one more time. Leave those hands to the Lord. Father, we just thank you for your grace and anointing in the house. We pray that grace will be multiplied to the hearers as they hear. Draw, draw, draw them into a deeper, richer, fuller, complete relationship with your God. Your divine power has been released to give us everything we need for life and for godliness. But we access those things through faith. And he said, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we pray grace will be released and increase more and more upon their lives to access greater revelation, greater levels of truth and fellowship and communion with you through your word and your Holy Spirit. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord open his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great night in the Lord. Bless you all.